Good morning, class. Good morning, good morning. It's time to say hello. Good morning, good morning. Let's get ready for the show. Hi, friends. It's Mrs. Demucci. I'm so excited to be with you today. Prayer a day. Fantastic Friday! Whoop whoop! Are you excited to be with me today? I'm excited to be with you today. We have a really fun video and I'm excited to share with you um, some fun things. It's kind of a lot about animals today, I'm noticing. Always sort of a theme ends up. Um, and so I hope you have a fun time watching. Let's get ready to do our prayer. Are you ready? Get those prayer hands invigorated and full of energy, ready to pray with me. We're going to start out with our prayer day book. Hopefully I didn't lose my page. Oh, maybe I did. Okay. God, who has folded back the mantle of the day, night to clothe us in the glo golden glory of the day, chase from our hearts all gloomy thoughts and make us glad with the brightness of hope. Book of Common Prayer. I love that one. Here comes Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. This is one that I found that I love, friends. It's called Doing Song. Clap your hands, clap your hands friends, blow a kiss, blow a kiss, make a face like this. Snap your thumbs, shake your head, make believe you are in bed. Blink your eyes, stretch your arms, stand up straight, look for farms. Here's the horse, nay, here's the cow, moo, here's the sheep, ba. you can bow. Here's the duck, quack, quack, our sound of the week. Here's the cat, meow. Here's the dog, woof, woof. Here's your hat. Wave goodbye, drive the car, throw the ball, throw it far. Eat your meal, sing a song, la la la, brush your teeth. Here, ding dong, ding dong. Hug your pillow, click the light, hug yourself and say good night. Okay. Ready for a great video today, friends? Yes, it's Fantastic Friday. We made it through another week. We only have three weeks left, I think. Maybe, maybe less. Okay, here we go. Cue you, Qu quack. Friends, do you recognize qua 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 quack, our lively letter qua? Get those quaquas ready with your fingers. The quacking sound. I'm a duck with a baby. Ooh. Look closely and you'll see that in some ways I look like that cute letter G. Do I, friends? No. My I, little duck quietly rides on my back. Open my beak and I start to say quiet. Qua 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 Good job, friends. Meet Bear, the kitten. Hi, friends. I want to introduce you to my new kitty. He's only six weeks old, and his name is Bear. When Mrs. Sir just got him, he was only four weeks old, so he's super tiny and he was eating out of a baby bottle, like a little baby. But now, he's getting bigger and he's eating his cat food right now, his wet cat food. So because he's so little, here he comes. Say hi, bear. Yeah, say hi. Say hi. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's coming a little too close. So we just to set him up with this little um, house here and um, get some little toys he has. And then I had to put this little bed here because with his little box, and he, that's where he goes to the bathroom. 
because and that zips up closed because at night he's still too little to run and roam around the house and that's his little bed and his water and his um, oops sorry and his um, little bit of food if he needs it because at night he can't really roam around the house but when we're home he can a little toy for him let's see if I can I wonder if I can spin this around I don't think I can sorry about that so then here's his for right here let's see if I can turn my camera around if we can see him on my back. He's on my back. Can you see him? I don't know what he's doing. He's playing with my hair, I think. He shouldn't be playing with my hair. He plays with my hair. He's very silly. Well, I'm gonna see if I can get him to get down for a second. If we can, um, come on, bear. come on. He's gonna come, I think. Here he comes, watch this. Come on, babe. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. He's trying to wait and see you. Come on. Come on. I can see it. Come on. Come on, you did it. Here he comes. Oh, get it. Go get it. Here he is, right here. Hey. He was so little. Look, he's right on Mrs. Red's arm. See him, how little he is? He's so tiny. <laughs> he likes to play with toys. Stuck, buddy. Oh, here he goes. Let's see. Let's see. You put it to toy. Get it. Get it, bear. Get it. There he goes. Oh, let's play with the string. See how tiny he is? So my daughter called him bear because when we first got him, he was so tiny he looked like a little itty bit of bear. Right? That's his little house. He likes that little house. He sleeps in there. He takes his little naps in there during the day, and that's where he sleeps at night. And this is a little toy. See? Get it, get it. Get it. <laughs> get it. There he goes. Get it. His stripes on his body. He has like these stripes on his body. We're really interested to see what he's gonna look like when he gets older. And his blue eyes. If you can see his eyes, his blue eyes. They're changing a little bit, but it depends. He may keep them. We have to know. We won't know until he's eight weeks old. And this is his new thing. Now he likes to climb on top of that. I know I told some of my friends at school that I had a kitty. I showed you guys some of my pictures sometime, uh, during school time. So I figured I would show you him live. And how he plays. <laughs> Flips this little stick. Yeah, so he's getting bigger. He's getting bigger and every day. And every day we switch off different foods. We try to, every week, I'm sorry, every week we try off different foods. But he started off with this little baby bottle. He doesn't need that anymore. And he used to have kitten formula, like a baby would, like baby formula. And then, um, now he's on to this wet food. And that's about it. I wanted to show my friends, with my friend Bear. Get it. Get it. Get it. He's learning how to pounce now too. How he's, you know, he's staring at that and he's watching. He's trying to be very still so that if this was an actual um, another animal or something that he thinks that was trying to attack him, he see he jumps on it and he tries to attack it first. See, there he goes.
there. Say bye. Bye, friends. Bye, friends. Oh, there he goes again. Okay. How about a little outdoor yoga? Friends, are you ready to do some outdoor yoga with me? Yeah. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Let's go. Ready? Our first pose, friends, that's easy. is that, that's mountain. That's the easiest pose ever. All right, let's get in our mountain pose. And that's the easiest pose. You only have to do like this. So first we start in our mountain pose, and we are rising from the earth. We are strong and stable. I am tall and wide. I am a majestic mountain. Are you majestic mountains? Plant your feet on the ground. Strong, push strong against your hands. Rise up. And open wide. Try to touch the sunshine. Reach high, 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 high. Get on those tippy toes. <laughs> yes. Excellent, friends. Now try to rise down and try to touch your toes. Touch those toes. And rise up again, friends. Reach that sun. Can you reach it? Go back on your tippy toes. Go back up. Yes. From here, we are going into our triangle pose, okay? Triangle pose. No, nope. Triangle pose, ready? And we're going to touch, starting from here, my legs are stable in my triangle pose. I stretch out my arms. Can you stretch them out? I extend and I reach out and I touch. Yes. to your friends while your hand is up there. Good, now back up and you're gonna reach out until the other side and touch. Good friends, and look up to your hand and wave. Hello, Mrs. Santilli. Hi, Mrs. Santilli. My hair is in the Yeah. Okay, back up. We are going to go into our Dancer pose. Let's see those beautiful dancers. Are you ready? Let's get into our dancer pose. First, balance on one foot. I can't 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 balance on one foot. And then go to the other side and balance, okay? Ready? Let's see if Mrs. Demucci can do it. Here we go. Try to balance. Hard to balance on the most. Can we try to be an elephant? And use our elephant breath. We're going to go right through our legs. Friends, right through our legs. And push your, push your elephant trunk through your leg. I'm going to have to wash my hair today. Yeah. Try to push and then bring that trunk back up. Bring the trunk back up and then back down through. Good stretching of those legs. You feel it when you push through, it's really stretches out. Because elephants can shower themselves with their trunk. Make believe you're showering yourself with your trunk. Make believe this is your trunk and you're showering yourself. Good. What kind of noise does an elephant make? Right back through. Yeah. Boom. Good. Back up and back down. Good. Good. Stretch out those legs, friends. Gorilla pose. Ready? So this time we're gorillas. Let's hear the gorilla noise. We're going to go holding it out this way and bringing it this way. What kind of what kind does it make? What kind of sound does a gorilla make? Do you try? Like that? I don't, I don't want to 
That's okay. You don't have to. There you go. And bring it over and over. And over and over. Good. You feel stretched out? Try this way. Try this way. How does this feel? Yes, yeah, stretch it. And again, back down. Over. Oh yeah, good. And back this way. Over. Yes. Flexible. Woo, woo. Now bring your legs down. Bring your legs down to the ground like this. Stretch out everything here. How does that feel? Good. <laughs> okay. Let's try one more, friends. Last one I want to try is our tree pose. Are you ready? I send roots down deep into the earth. I am focused and stable, palms to the chest. Ready? I reach high to the sky. I am a beautiful tree. Let me see our tree pose. If you need to hold on to something, you can. Put your leg there, all right? And then you can go up. Reach up those branches. Look at her looking at my foot. <laughs> it's a boo-boo on my foot, friend. Okay? Mrs. Demucci had a bad boo-boo on her foot. All right, you ready for the other side now? Here we go. Try to lift your foot up here. And then lift up this way. Good. That's easy. You don't have to take your shoes off. Mrs. Demucci just did, but you don't have to. Okay, friends? Your kids' backyard adventure. Hi, guys. Um, so this is another little mini Nature Kids episode. Look at this. Look at this frog. I literally was just walking by. I almost stepped on it, but I didn't. Look how gorgeous it is. That frog is absolutely beautiful. I have no idea what species it is. I'm not the best with amphibians. Um, but I do, I can identify some, but I'm going to do some research for you guys about this frog. Um, it's actually, it, it was, it's really pretty watch. I can actually pet it. It won't jump, I don't think. That is insane. It's a tiny frog. Look at my hand for comparison. See its eyes moving? Oh, that's amazing. I love, oh, look, he's moving, he's moving. That is, he's beautiful. And I think he is a little nervous, but I think he's starting to realize that we're not predators because if we were, we'd be biting him, we'd be eating him, we'd be swallowing him and all that. But um, he is still slightly nervous. He's like, I don't want to take my chances. So I'm going to pretend I am either dead or- Oh, look at him, he's jumping, look at him jumping. He's... Zoom in, zoom in. <gasps> look at him, oh yes. Oh, did you see that? Did you get that? This frog is beautiful, and I, it, the way it moves and how it propels itself. Now, I w I'm not going to handle this frog because it is so small and fragile. If it were a larger fr frog, I, would, uh, I could grab it and then I could either cr uh, like cradle it in my hands, or if it's a much larger frog, like a, a large toad or a bullfrog even, um, you grab it by the legs and hold it like that because its insides are squishy. So you grab by the legs, the most solid part. And see, frogs, as like I'm just being general here, um, will most for most of their life will spend inside the water first, from the egg to the tadpole, then to kind of like kind of like a tadpole again, but it's got feet instead, and then finally turns into an adult frog here. As we see, and I still have no, I'm, I have no idea what kind of frog this is, but I'm so happy that we caught it. After doing a little research, we've realized this is a wood frog, which is an amphibian, right? This picture looks quite a bit like the one we found, doesn't it? The wood frog has a broad distribution over North America, extending from the boreal forest of the north to the southern Appalachians with several notable disjunct populations, including lowland eastern North Carolina. It's beautiful. It, look at the orange coloring, and on the sides of the legs, it's actually there's stripes. See? Oh, he's jumping again! Oh my god! Look how high he jumps! That is crazy. <laughs> See, 
see this, he blends in like with the leaves. That's why he did, and so that was really cool. <laughs> Wasn't that guys? Uh, again, brief video, and maybe I'll actually add it onto the other video, so we'll see it. Uh, it'll be a little longer, a little longer, longer adventure. Uh, maybe I can create a whole new mini series about this, like advent adventures in your backyard. Uh, but this is cool, uh, and you can find all these animals in your backyard and pretty much everywhere. <laughs> so that was cool to see. Um, remember, love nature, and nature will love you. Bye, guys. Q U is for quilt. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Crafty Wednesday. So I set you, Q is for quilt. And if you notice, you have a Q-U, and that's what we're learning this week was qu qu quilt. So it's a word for quilt. So this is, and I also sent you, um, oops, some little pieces here that have um, like a plaid um, design. And those are gonna go in the ones with the dotted lines. And then I sent you like a solid color that has a little bit of color to it. I mean, it has a little bit of lines to it, a pattern to it, but you don't have to worry about that one. That's gonna go in the spots that are blank. So what you're going to do is you're gonna start off with your plaid color that I sent you, and you're just gonna make a pattern of, we're gonna make a quilt. So we're gonna make a pattern of like a, <clears throat> excuse me, a um, plaid. And then you're gonna use the other one and you're gonna put glue here. And you're gonna do the same thing. You can keep going until you fill up the whole paper of the pattern that you have here. So this pattern, I, 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 sent, I think I may have sent you some other ones too, but uh, different colors, but this one's C plaid and then solid, plaid, solid, plaid. And you're gonna keep going. So this one starts off with, it ends with plaid, so you're gonna do solid here. And then plaid. And you're just gonna keep going until you get to the end. I'm just gonna keep going. Hold on, let's see, this is a solid. I mean, or, and then, or if you wanna do like that, or you can do, you can take all of your plaids and you can fill in just the, um, the dotted lines with your plaid. You can want to do that too, see? And then, there's your plaid. Then if you want, you can go back and fill in your spaces that you have left behind with your solid color. The two or one, that's two, that's one. However you wanna do it, because it's your quilt. Do you have any quilts at home maybe that you guys um, stay warm in the winter with, or if you're cold, even in the summer, some people get cold, and you can wrap up well nicely in a blanket. A quilt is just another name for a blanket. I think it's a little different though. It's a different kind of um, material sometimes. Okay, there you go. I'm gonna finish it off with these last two solids pieces. And here's your quilt. See? Push that all down. And there you go. So you have your striped or your plaid, your solid plaid, solid plaid, and you keep going because it follows into a pattern right along. Oops. There you go again. Q, Q U, quilt, qu, quilt. Because a Q is always with his friend U. Thanks, friends. It's story time. Everybody take a seat, take a seat, take a seat. Everybody take a seat on the floor. Not on the ceiling, not on the door. Everybody take a seat on the floor. Hi friends, it's me again, Mrs. Namuchi. <laughs> I am back and I'm ready to read our story of the day. Now, remember we read all about animal teeth? and then animal noses. This time we're gonna read about animal feet. Also by Sandra Markle and illustrated by Howard McWilliam. I'm excited to read this one to hear what we have to say. 
What if one day, when you woke up and climbed out of bed, the feet you planted on the floor weren't yours? What if overnight a wild animal's feet took their place at the end of your legs? <laughs> Let's hear. This is about an eastern gray kangaroo. Let's see if I can turn it this way for you. Eastern gray kangaroos' hind feet are super big. Just the sole of an adult's foot can be at 18 inches long. Big feet help a kangaroo jump about 30 feet in a single hop. Each huge jump means a kangaroo can cover a lot of ground fast. I'll say, friends, if you had an eastern gray kangaroo's hind feet, you'd be able to jump up as high as six feet so you could reach high shelves with ease. Eastern gray kangaroos live in groups called mobs. When one kangaroo senses danger, it thumps its hind feet on the ground to watch the others. Imagine having kangaroo feet. Uh oh, a house fly. Yikes. A house fly's feet have tiny claws for gripping. Plus, they have foot pads covered with hair like parts that give off a gluey substance. So a fly sticks where it lands, even upside down on the ceiling. A house fly's feet are also covered with sensors that act like your tongue's taste buds, so a fly can taste what it is stepping on. Whoa. If you had a house fly feet, You'd be a basketball superstar. You could run up the wall and across the ceiling to drop the ball through the hoop. You'd never miss a shot. That is funny. Okay, friends. Green basilisk lizard. Let's see if we can turn this way a little bit. A green basilisk lizard's back feet have long toes fringed with skin. This fringe spreads out when it slaps its foot down. When it slaps its foot on water, air becomes trapped under each toe, and when it runs fast, this keeps the lizard on the surface for at least 15 feet. Whoa. When it sinks underwater, a green basilisk lizard's fringed toe becomes great swim fins. Genius. If you had green basilisk lizard feet, you wouldn't need a bridge to cross a stream, and you'd be on the other side in no time. Right, friends? This is Demucha's gonna turn this camera around so you guys can see better. Hold on, okay? How's that, better? Cheetah. A cheetah's foot is made up of soft pads, a center one, and toe pads, plus nails. Shaped like that, it has a new name. Instead of a foot, it's called a paw. A cheetah's paw pads are tough and ridged like tire treads, and the cheetah's sturdy nail act like cleats so its paws keep it from slipping during super fast sprints. These amazing paws help a cheetah run as fast as 70 miles per hour. Holy smokes, that's faster than any other land animal. Fact, a cheetah's pattern of foot pads ridges are as unique as a foot fingerprint, which means no two cheetahs have the same paws. Yeah. Never thought of that before. If you had cheetah feet, you'd be on time for school every day because you'd always catch the bus. Gray wolf. A gray wolf's feet are called paws too. When crossing snow, a gray wolf's toes, toes separate and stretch apart. That makes its paws bigger and like wearing snowshoes, spreads out its weight. This means its paws don't sink in a, as deep, which makes walking or running easier. My gosh. A special network of tiny blood vessels help keep a full wolf's feet warm even on ice. Wowzer. Genius. If you had gray wolf feet, you could play barefoot in the snow and still have toasty, warm Tootsies. Yes. I like that idea. Duck-billed platypus. A duck-billed platypus has skin connecting its spread apart toes. This type of foot is called a webbed foot. The platypus's front feet even have skin that sticks out beyond its toes, making them the perfect swimming slip flippers. But the minute it starts to walk, dig, or scratch, this skin pulls back so the platypus can use its sturdy, sharp nails. Fact, a male duck-billed platypus's back feet each have a spur-like nail to inject venom. 
<gasps> a poisonous fluid. This isn't deadly to humans, but can be very painful, I would imagine. If you had duck-billed platypus feet, you'd be a, a fast-swimming superhero with a built-in weapon, for sure. Barn owl. A barn owl's feet have four toes tipped with talons, which are long, curved, sharp nails. Usually, three of its toes aim forward and one backward, but it can swing a second toe on each foot to the back. This helps keep an extra tight grip on wiggly prey, such as rats or mice. A barn owl's middle front toenail on each foot has a tooth-like edge. It uses this to comb the feathers on its disc-shaped face. Huh. Flat feathers funnel sound so its ears so to its into its ears so it can listen as well as watch when hunting for a meal. Terrific. If you had barn owl feet, you'd never have to bend up over to pick things up. <laughs> Silly. Okay. Aardvark. Each of the toes on an aardvark's feet end in a sharp, sturdy toenail. The front ones are shovel shaped. These are great for digging a burrow for their home or finding ants and termites in its favorite foods. It, if attacked by a predator like a lion or leopard, an aardvark digs a burrow to escape. If caught, it flips onto its back and lashes out with its nails. If you had aardvark feet, you could dig super fast, which means you'd be the first to find buried treasure. Giant African millipede. A giant African millipede's body is made up of segments. A baby starts out with just four or five segments. But as it grows, it adds on more. Each segment has about four feet. An adult may be 40 segments long with lots of feet, and it needs every single one of them. It can travel by tunneling through the ground. So while some feet are busy walking, others move dirt out of its way. A giant African millipede has an exoskeleton, meaning the hard parts of its body are on the outside. So to defend itself, it curls up with its delicate legs and feet inside and its armor outside. With giant African millipede feet, you wouldn't need anyone else to have a parade. You would be a marching band of one. Mountain goat. A mountain goat's foot is encased in a hard nail-like covering. Shaped that way, it has a special name. Instead of a foot, it's called a hoof. A mountain goat's hoof is split into two halves and each one moves separately. That lets it get a good grip in rocky high places. Each half of a mountain goat's hoof has a sharp edge plus a rubbery pad. Together, these add extra grip to keep it from slipping. If you had mountain goat feet, your feet would be all you need to rescue a kitten. <laughs> white rhinoceros. Each white rhinoceros foot is an elastic pad plus three stiff toes tipped with hoof-like nails. With each step, its foot pad presses down, spreading the toes wide apart. This lets the rhino's feet support its heavy body and it needs the support. An adult rhino can weigh as much as 7,000 pounds. In spite of their size, white rhinos can run as fast as 30 miles per hour, but only over a short distance. If you had white rhinoceros feet, your family wouldn't need a car because you could carry everyone all at once. <laughs> Wild animal feet could be cool for a while, but you don't need your feet to grab food, run on water, or stand upside down on the ceiling. And you don't need your feet to stay well-groomed or taste what you step on. But if you could have, a wild, have wild animal feet for more than a day, what kind would be right for you? Hmm, good question. Luckily, you don't have to choose. The feet at the end of your legs will always be people feet. They're what you need to run, walk, dance, skip, hop, and even just stand in one place. With the right footwear, you can do lots more. Plus, your feet can look very stylish while being active. <laughs> Let's see what our final page says. What's special about your feet, friends? Each of your feet are unique. It's rare for anyone to have two feet that are exactly alike. Toe prints are as unique as fingerprints, and one foot is usually slightly bigger than the other. The Guinness Book of Records lists Bram to Tukilia as having the world's biggest feet. His left is 15 inches long, his right is 14.76 inches. No wonder Brahms has to have a shoe specially made for him. Huh. Most important, your feet are built for action. 
Your fields are built for, uh, made up of 26 bones and 33 joints, which are places where bones meet so the body can bend easily. Plus, there are lots of muscles to pull on all of these bones to move them. Keep your feet healthy. You, your feet need to be in good condition to do their best for you. So here are some tips for taking care of your feet. Choose shoes that fit properly. Ones that are too tight can be painful and cause problems such as ingrown toenails. Yikes. Be active to exercise your foot muscles and keep your feet flexible. If possible, walk and play on grass or dirt. That's easier on your feet than being on a hard paved surface. Wash and dry your feet daily, especially between your toes. That's the best way to prevent problems like athlete's foot, a fungal infection of the skin. Also check regularly for any cuts, blisters, or open sores. If you see any, ask an adult to help you treat them. If your feet don't heal quickly, you may need to visit a doctor for more care. Whenever possible, wear socks with your shoes. Socks help absorb shocks. They keep your shoes from rubbing against your feet. Feet also sweat a lot and socks soak up sweat. Then, before, ba there, before bacteria have time to attack your feet, change your socks and wash the dirty ones. Yes, friends. No stinky feet. P U. The end. We have one more book in this series. Can't wait to read it next week. Okay, friends, I hope you enjoyed reading with me. I sure enjoyed reading with you. Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend, friends. Hopefully, lots of sunshine will continue. Okay? Ciao for now. Ciao for now, everyone. Tomorrow, but goodbye from today. Let's do this preschool style. You ready for a little wrap? See you later, alligator. Gotta run, skeleton. See you soon, baboon. After a while, crocodile. Adios, hippos. Gotta go, buffalo. Out the door, dinosaur. Gotta truck, baby duck. I do cockatoo, chop, chop, lollipop. Better swish, jellyfish. Be sweet, parakeet. Bye-bye, butterfly, got a scat, kitty cat, blow a kiss, goldfish, toodaloo, kangaroo, give a hug, ladybug, chow, chow, brown cow, hit the trail, tiny snail, in an hour, sunflower, in the morn, unicorn, better shake, rattlesnake, thumbs up, silly pup, got a scram, little lamb, can't stay.